In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Vero Synapse XL. And at the end, I'm gonna tell you why you should or shouldn't buy it. Hey everyone, it's Wes Newman with The Pocket Perspective. Welcome back. And if you're new here, this channel focuses on reviews and how-tos of EDC gear, knives, flashlights, things like that. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Vero Synapse XL. I'm gonna cover the specs, followed by the design and build quality. I'll weave my experiences of the knife throughout, finish with a quick summary, and tell you why you should or shouldn't buy the knife. So starting off with the specs. So this is what I would consider a large size knife. I uh, don't feature too many large size knives on here. Has a blade length of 3.85 inches or 98 millimeters. Has a closed length of right at five inches or 127 millimeters. And that's gonna put the overall length at 8.85 inches or 225 millimeters. Handle thickness on this is pretty wide. Uh, point 595 inches or 15.1 millimeters. Blade thickness is also fairly chunky on this guy. It's uh, 0.157 inches or four millimeters. There was no reported weight on this, so let's go ahead and weigh it on my scales. Coming in at 157.4 grams or 5.55 ounces. So it is a chunky boy to say the least. Way over the ounce per inch mark. This has a drop point style blade. It is flat ground, has M390 steel. The handles are uh, a mixture of titanium and micarta. There's uh, several different variants that I'll talk about a little later, but you can see it's basically a, a bolster uh, lock knife and so it's a combination of a liner lock and a frame lock and this has a right side clip up, right side tip up clip this is made in china and the price on this variant is 425 dollars depending on the blade finish and the scale choice the price uh, varied and then behind the edge thickness This one's coming in right about 17 or 18 thousandths, somewhere in there. So fairly thin uh, for the size stock. And uh, this is a, a fairly tall uh, blade as well. So it, it does slice pretty well uh, in my experiences. Uh, so those are the specs. Let's go ahead and do a few knife comparisons. First up, trusty PM2. So you can see here that it is uh, larger than a PM2. You can see uh, if I line up the cutting edges, uh, it's definitely longer cutting. The blade length is longer as well, overall blade length. Of course, the PM2 has got the, the larger finger choil and then uh, the handles are, are larger as well. So in general, it's just an overall larger knife. Next up, I'm going to bring up the Endura, or this one's the Pacific Salt 2, but it's uh, essentially the same here. And you can see that uh, they're actually about the same size. So comparatively, this is the size of an Endura. You can see the cutting edges are just about the same and overall lengths are just about the same. And then finally, we'll bring in the big boy, the Spyderco Military. You can see here that the, the military is uh, quite a bit longer in overall length than the Synapse XL. But if we actually line, line, if we align the blades, you can see that the cutting edges are just about the exact same. Uh, overall um, blade is longer, but the, 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 the military has this uh, larger finger choil. And then of course, it's got quite a bit more handle sticking out here. So those are your comparisons. Moving on to the design of the knife. Uh, this is designed by Joseph Vero from Vero Engineering. And uh, Joseph has been lighting the knife micro brand market on fire for the past year, almost year and a half now. Uh, he has been cranking out uh, tons of high quality designs and he has made this his full-time job along with his wife, Michelle. 
and uh, he has done a lot in a very short amount of time. Uh, he is a knife designer and he has these produced by uh, Best Tech uh, to his specifications, which are quite nice. I'll get into that a little bit more. And you can uh, buy the knives directly from him and typically they are in pre-order. And so uh, they sell out very, very quickly on pre-order. And then there's also some drops that happen after all of the pre-orders have been fulfilled. There's usually a handful. Um, they get lottoed off on Facebook or his Instagram. And I'll drop links below uh, both to his Facebook, uh, Instagram, and to his uh, website. Uh, he's made a, a good handful of very popular knives up to this point. And then he's also made uh, this uh, this fulcrum. Uh, this is the mini fulcrum, but uh, He's also made a pry bar uh, that is extremely useful. And uh, I just picked one up not too long ago and I'll be reviewing it soon. Uh, these are super popular and uh, I really like the design so far. So um, this is the Synapse XL, which uh, means that it's the larger version of the Synapse. And I have yet to handle a Synapse. I actually have a Synapse uh, Gen 2 on pre-order and I'm very excited to get that one as well. And so, um, you know, ergonomic, I'm sorry, aesthetically, this knife really appeals to me. I like Joseph's design language. Uh, most of his knives have some inherent design language that uh, is uh, Telltale Bureau. And uh, a couple things are, um, for one, uh, he's using this, uh, this V spot is what it's called. Essentially, it's this uh, rectangular milled out section for it's the opening uh, hole and so it's kind of a bit of a fuller uh, but not really and it's been named uh, the V spot and it works extremely well for the middle finger flick and you can see on this side there is not one uh, on the axon that was just released it has uh, one on either side um, and uh, Joseph is known for larger knives. He likes larger knives, and uh, he also likes to call this the lock side, the show side, because um, he likes to show off the design of the lock bar, the clip, and um, all of the mechanism, essentially. He thinks that that uh, looks better than the show side. And uh, there is definitely uh, a lot, there is an art to making all of this look good. Um, you know, this, this bolster lock and uh, the geometry on the lock mechanism definitely looks good on his knife. So aesthetically, I really like the lines of this knife. It's a drop point style blade, which I, I really like. Uh, drop point and clip points are right up there at the top of the list for me. And, uh, you know, the handle shape, the lines, everything just flows very well, both um, open and closed. And so you can see that this is uh, a flipper knife. And uh, I'll, I'll talk more about the action a little bit more, but uh, the flipper is very unobtrusive. You can see here that uh, it, it almost doesn't even look like a flipper tab. And so it's got multiple opening uh, methods. And then the, uh, the, blade nests very nicely inside of the handle here and so although the lines really flow both open and closed so aesthetically uh most of his stuff is appealing to me right now i like the looks of it i think he's got a, a nice mix of uh, organic lines along with some of these uh these harder chamfers which i think uh, go really well and blend together again uh the blade on this is a drop point style blade this is flat ground it's got a nice swedge on it, has a sharpening choil. I wouldn't really call that a finger choil, although you could get your finger in there, the tip of it, and do a little bit of light work, but uh, I wouldn't be choking up on it and really bearing down. Has uh, some jimping back here on the rear and uh, also has jimping, as you can see right here on the uh, flipper tab. Uh, this is, um, got very few markings on it so he likes a nice clean blade and so do i and you can see here there's the serial number 170 and then on the spine of it here he has his logo where it says uh, vero and those are the only markings on the blade at all so i really appreciate clean aesthetics nice simple lines if you've watched any of my um also there's the the vero on his clip uh missed that um so if you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know I'm, I like practicality and nice simple uh, lines. And so 
Uh, this has got those things and uh, I, I really like his uh, design language uh, so far. The steel in this is M390. Uh, not much to say about that except for it's the current uh, winner in premium steels uh, for production knives and even some customs. So it's kind of that Goldilocks steel that's got uh, good edge retention, uh, decent toughness and, and high corrosion resistance. And uh, at this price point, uh, you would definitely expect an M390. Um, so uh, moving on to the action, that's where this knife just shines. I mean, it is phenomenal. It is one of the best actions of any knife that I've used yet. Um, you can see there that the flipper tab, um, you really can't false start this. I mean, maybe you can, but the detent is dialed so well that once it starts moving, that's it. It's just, it's gonna open all the way. And this it's got so much mass there with the blade. And then the middle finger flick is just phenomenal. And I'm a huge fan of the middle finger flick. And those are my two favorite ways to open a knife. And this has got both. And having that, uh, that um, flipper tab that blends in so nicely. I mean, this, this knife is, uh, you know, just the action is so well tuned on it. Um, I have a hard time putting it down and you know, the, it's a bigger knife, right? And again, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I'm kind of a smaller medium knife type person. And so this one's a bit of a stretch for me being a 3.85 inch um, blade length. And I'm really excited for the uh, Synapse uh, Gen 2. I think it's uh, three and a quarter or just over three and a quarter. I can't really remember, but I know that's it's uh, uh, in between three and three and a half, I believe. And so that's kind of the sweet spot for me. So I'm really looking forward to getting the Gen 2 and comparing these. And uh, but right now, um, you know, this is one of my favorite knives. Uh, so the action, yeah, I mean, it's just really good. The, the, the drop shut, you know, it's just full hydraulic drop shut. You know, the, it's got so much mass in the blade. It just goes, it just shuts, uh, not, not a problem. And I'm really hoping the Synapse uh, Gen 2 is no different. Uh, the lock on this is a bolster lock, which is kind of a combination of a liner and frame lock. You can see there, it's, it's very well designed has a lock bar insert in it and uh, has an over travel stop. Let's see if I can get that. I don't think you're gonna be able to see it. Might be, yeah, there you can kind of see it right in the, right there. So it's got an over travel stop, a steel lock bar insert. And if you notice here, the lockup is actually right here in the middle um, and not out here at the front. And really that's due to this flipper tab. Um, you notice you need to be able to hit the top of it right there. And um, if it was locking up right there, you wouldn't be able to put all that jimping and stuff. And so uh, it's interesting, um, you know, the way that he's designed this, uh, this offset lock bar, it works really well. Uh, and so it's, it's a little harder to see the lockup, but uh, it, it appears to be about 55 50 to 60%, about where you would uh, want it to be. So lock on this is, is really nice. The handles on this are, you know, uh, obviously it's a bolster. So this is titanium. You can see here, there's there's quite a bit of material here for the liner. And then it's got uh, these micarta scales. And, you know, I talked about the different variants. And so let me just go over those real quick. When you pre-ordered this, uh, if you could get them fast enough, there was three different uh, blade finishes. There was this belt finish, there's a hand satin, and a stone washed. And then there was different uh, handle scale materials. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to remember them all. Green, natural micarta, black micarta, and then end cut uh, carbon fiber uh, and, and red uh, end cut carbon fiber, I believe were the choices for this specific run. And so I ended up obviously with the green micarta and uh, belt finish. And the Micarta here is, um, you know, a non-oiled, so it's it's a bit dry. And so uh, he wanted to leave that up to the customer if they wanted to um, let this patina here themselves, or they could oil it and uh, get the greens to pop out a little bit more. And uh, what's 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 nice that he's designed here is is the scales are easy to to swap out. And so. He doesn't have them for sale uh, yet on his website for the Synapse XL. I'm hoping he's gonna start offering those. And so 
Uh, this, it's got some nice customizable features here by being able to take these scales off and switch them out, which I'm excited about as well. It does have a titanium uh, backspacer here, as you can see. Uh, no lanyard hole at all. Thank you very much, Joseph. And it's got all titanium uh, hardware on it as well. And so um, titanium clip, titanium um, screws, titanium uh, pivot, and it has, um, and they're all T8. So everything on here is T8. I really appreciate that as well. I don't like multiple sizes. And I don't know anybody who does. Uh, wish manufacturers would stop doing that or uh, designers would stop specking it. And uh, it also has uh, ceramic bearings and a ceramic detent. Um, so moving on to the ergos of this knife, you know, again, this is uh, a, a bit larger than I'm used to, uh, but the ergos are good on it. Um, I don't feel like, um, you know, that it's too big for me to manipulate. In fact, I feel like I can, I can, it's got, it's, it's got a, plenty of hand, different hand positions for me. If I want to choke up on it, I can do that. Obviously there's a ton of room left back here, or if I want to, uh, you know, put my uh, fingers back down in here into this, um, this milled out section, um, you know, there's plenty of rooms for me to get comfortable on here. So I think almost any size hand is going to be able to find a comfortable spot be able to use this. So depending on the cutting tasks, you know, the, I don't think you're going to have a problem, uh, finding a comfortable position. Um, you know, the, um, one little thing I'll, I'll nitpick is there's a bit of a hot spot right there, um, on the bolster when I'm choking up on it and really just, uh, um, gripping it. So if I, if I put my hand right here, you can see if I put my finger right in here, and just bear down on the knife. This, it just drives that, that part of the handle um, into the side of my finger. And it's a bit of a hot spot. And it's really only in that one situation um, when I'm not holding the knife up here. But naturally I'm wanting to hold my hand right there. And so I would like to see that taken care of a little bit. Um, you know, you can see that the lock bar is just a little too pointy right there. And uh, this is broken over and so it's hard for me to tell exactly what's poking me whether it's the lock bar or the front of this bolster here but there's definitely a hot spot the the clip on this um you know that it, it does stick up a little bit right here but it, where it hits me in my hand is um right here in the middle and i don't have a problem with having a hot spot there it, it feels pretty comfortable i can feel the clip there obviously uh, but the clips, uh, you know, uh, nicely done. The um, the carry on this is is good as well. Um, while we're talking about the clip, I will say though that there's not a ton of room in here, and it works well on most of my pants. But I did wear some thicker pants, and I had a hard time, you know, getting this clip uh, in and out uh, just because of the clearance here. And so I would maybe like to see this a little bit taller and a little more clearance in here. Uh, but you know, the, the pants that I wear day to day, uh, didn't really have a problem. And, you know, um, the, the, the hem, you know, seemed to lock in pretty good there. And obviously it's a, it's, it's a bigger knife and, uh, you know, you're going to feel it in your pocket. Um, but the carry on it is really nice. And part of it is due to this flipper tab you know, not being, not really being there. And so when you run your hand out and beside there, uh, there's really nothing to catch your finger on. You're going to feel the knife in your pocket though. It is, uh, it is not a deep carry clip. You can see there, you're going to have a half inch or so, maybe a little bit more sticking out of your pocket. And so let me show you what it looks like in the pocket. Okay. Front right pocket. You can see there, uh, um, you can definitely see the clip and you can see part of the, the knife sticking out, but again, I don't have a problem putting my hand down in there beside it. Uh, you know, it's not a super wide knife for as big, for being as big as it is, you know, it's not as wide as, as some spider coves with the spidey hump. And so, uh, carry wise, it does carry very nicely. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm always a right rear pocket guy and this one works great back here. Um, bigger knives tend to work even better in my right rear pocket. Um, and so this one has been getting a lot of pocket time back here and it's super, super comfortable uh, for me back here. Um, so overall, 
Again, the carry on this knife is, is pretty good for the size of it. Moving on to the build quality of this knife. Overall, I would say this is excellent. Uh, I didn't find any issues with the build quality. I'll just say that up front. So if we look at the, the grind lines, uh, they're very consistent. Um, the plunge is uh, perfect. Uh, grind lines meet up uh, where they should. This, uh, this V spot is milled out very nicely. Um, the swedge looks good. It's got uh, nice horizontal lines there on the flat. Um, you know, the markings, uh, the, the ones that are there are nice and crisp and legible the handles uh there's these are looks like it's stone washed here on the titanium and then the micarta is just uh is just dry like i already talked about and so you can oil it yourself or just let it naturally patina with your oils on your hands um all of the the milling on the handles um looks good um you know this this nice uh large chamfering uh you know, makes uh, for a nice profile there in your hand. And so, you know, you always want a, a kind of an oval looking profile. Um, you know, you never want anything round uh, because the, the knife can, can move around and you, you never want anything real squared off because it, it makes hot spots. And so um, this here is, is about the perfect shape, uh, you know, when you, when you close your hand up around it. And so it locks up extremely well. Uh, this jimping, um, I didn't really talk about it. Um, I would like to see this, it, the jimping on here is really good. Like, I like what he's done here with the style of jimping, uh, but I would like to see this uh, farther forward as as stated on most of my knife reviews. Really, my, my thumb is hitting about right there where it says Vero, and so I would like to see the jimping either move out to here or be extended. Um, but uh, you know, that's, that's something I've come accustomed to with almost all jimping. Um, so the, the handles, yeah, nicely milled. The um, lock up, um, like I said, it's hard to see in there just by the way that the, the lock is designed, um, but it looks like it's about 50-ish percent somewhere in there. You can kind of see it. Um, the centering on this knife is perfect. I've already disassembled it, but when it came, it came perfect. Uh, the sharpening is, is there, missed the flip. The sharpening is perfect. Let me get a good shot. So it looks good all the way from heel to tip. Nice, even offset. It came extremely hair popping sharp, really nice. And I like this sharpening troil right here. And, uh, you know, just overall, um, they've done a fantastic job on this knife. I know that, uh, that, uh, Joseph, uh, really spent a lot of time thinking about these, uh, this knife and just his designs in general. And you can tell that, uh, uh he thinks about almost every single detail and every single aspect. And I think he's, he's, uh, really working hard, uh, to deliver the optimal knife. And, uh, th they've really done a good job on the execution here. So let's take a minute and Rockwell test the blade. Okay, I think I'm gonna test it right in this area right here. We have plenty of room there. You can see there's the detent track, so I'm just gonna test it opposite of that. Apply the preload. We set the scale by the 150 kilogram force. Bring it back to the set point. It looks like we're Looks like we're just under 61. It might be 61. It's really hard to read in between like 60 and a half and 61, but look at it straight down. I mean, it's, yeah, I think it's like 60.7 to 61, somewhere in there. So really that's about optimal in my opinion for M390. 
Yeah, so uh, there is the divot, you can see. Yeah, so uh, nice work on the heat treating. In summary, I think the Synapse XL is possibly my favorite knife right now. You know, it's a bit big for my taste, but this may be converted me to a big knife guy. I, the action on it is just so incredible. Uh, this rear flipper, uh, I love the design of it. It's so unobtrusive. You know, you don't hit your, your pinky on it uh, when you're sliding your hand in your pocket. The, the middle finger flick is just phenomenal on it. Ergos are good, top-notch um, materials. And, uh, you know, Joseph, like I said, you know, is just on fire right now. And if you're lucky enough to get in on one of his pre-orders, uh, you can rest assured that you're going to be receiving a fantastic product. And if you don't like it, uh, just know that the secondary market is very strong on his knives right now. So this is definitely something that I would recommend to others. Moving on to why you should or shouldn't buy the knife. You should buy it if you're looking for a well-executed large folder. You should buy it if you're looking for a knife with multiple opening methods that has great action. And finally, you should buy it if you want something customizable. This has so much titanium on it and uh, these swappable scales, you're gonna be able to create something that is just your own. And why you shouldn't buy it. You shouldn't buy it if you don't like large knives. You shouldn't buy it if you want something lightweight. And finally, you shouldn't buy it if you're on a budget. Let me know down in the comments what you think about the Synapse XL. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care and have a great day.